Hello and welcome to Once More With Feeling The latest album from Hammerfall Now this was another one of those cases of Ooh, they've got a new album coming out I'm getting that And I have it right here First things first, I want to know who did the artwork And I don't mean simply I want to know their name I want to know the person because Just Look at this I'll like, you want to sell a power metal album, you got it right here. But anyway, I was sort of like, Hammerfall's got a new album coming out. Well, that's this re week's reviews decided. So yeah, let's just get straight into it. First we've got Never Forgive, Never Forget. Now that's a good opener, very nice driving force. Not necessarily one of the stronger songs on the album, but certainly a very good way to open. It's got that good, very furious drum beat, the guitars are all nicely orchestrated, and it definitely has that feel of the sort of song that you would have playing during a big battle scene, which is appropriate enough because um, each of the songs in the lyrics, it's got a sort of a little quotation to open the lyrics and kind of give you an idea of what the song is all about and the one for this is this is war and this is what we do so you're going back to your typical power metal battles warring between vikings all that sort of deal great opener next we have the title track which draws upon various Book of Revelations, Milton's Paradise Lost sort of imagery. Uh, the lyrics state, and in the video you have Welcome to Pandemonium, the capital of hell. There is no uh, metaphor lost, but it is one of my favourite songs on the album, if simply because I love apocalyptic imagery. And I especially love when the literary allusions are on point. So in this case, you've got at the final battle on the first day of war, where angels die and legends rise, only one man survives. So you've already got how the apocalypse begins and what actually sparks it off. And then the next pre-chorus is at the final battle on the third day of war, a warrior-shaped demon lord came to conquer them all. Now, that's interesting because that's alluding to what the actual fourth horseman is. Because, for those who don't know, the fourth horseman is not pestilence. It's actually conquest. I know people might argue that that's actually um, the same as war, but no, the interesting thing is conquest isn't through just outright destruction and invasion, it's through unifying, so conquering everyone and warrior shaped demon lord, so you could argue that How's the best way to conquer everyone? Well, that's with this huge, imposing, impressive leader. Interestingly enough, and this makes me want to hear how the original version was like, so the demo version, um, Yarkim Kans had a lot of difficulties with the vocal tracks, so he had to set it to one side and let it age like a good wine, as he put it, and he wanted to make it sound special. You definitely did that here. Like, I showed it to a couple of friends, um, I showed the video to a couple of friends, and one of them said, well, those weren't, that wasn't the pitch expected. So, you know, my friends who aren't They'll listen to the odd metal track, but they're not huge metal heads like me. They were impressed. So, you've, you've definitely got a song that can draw in new fans. Next, you've got Testify. Now, this is an interesting one, and I will admit, I actually realised this through reading the lyrics a couple of times. Um, 
on the first day man invented God. So that's that's a I see what you're doing there, Hammerfall. That's a cheeky one. Um but I like it. It's, you've got the whole testifying to God and supplicating to religious doctrine and it's kind of a sort of rejection of that ideology and I I will admit I didn't clue into it the first couple of times but uh, that's a nice one to just mull over and think about the more times you listen so definitely a lot of replay value with that one Next, we've got One Against the World. Now, that I interpreted as a got to be true to yourself, true to your passions. You've got to embrace the music that you love and you can't let yourself be beaten down. The opening uh, line in the lyrics is, we're metal heart crusaders with dreams we must pursue. So. It's very easy to interpret it as we've got these passions that we must follow as a collective. But also, Joachim's explanation of the song is that it's about the interpersonal relationship between Hammerfall as a band and their fans and how when a show is going on, the anticipation and expectations can grow to a fever pitch and explode when they hit the stage. Which, I, I'd say that, ob obviously, he's going to know what he's talking about. It's his song. But I'd say that it's just as reasonable to understand it as following your own passions as well just encouraged by their music. Next, we've got parentheses we make, close parentheses, Sweden Rock. Now this is a fun one because that's basically a love letter to all the metal that has come before and all the metal that has been inspired by it. Um, it's actually a bit of an Easter egg hunt because if you go through some of the verses uh, it's got a whole load of references, and even with me being as into metal as I am, I didn't pick up on barely any of them. But what's cool is there's actually a Spotify playlist called We Make Sweden Rock, and it's something like tracks 1 to 28 will be all the references that that song makes. And... I just, it's a fun song, like, I love songs that are directly singing about what has fostered their love for the music. I feel like those are some of the best songs in terms of getting new fans on board and getting people to interact with more and learn about more in the genre. I, I just... I love that sort of song. Next, you have Second to One. Now, what's your power metal album without your good old love song? But this is not your typical love song in the sense of it's not the, oh, I love this person from afar, I hope that we can one day be together, bollocks. This is a proper love song in the sense that it explicitly says in the liner notes, Never be somebody's second, but always be second to one. Which means, always put your loved one first. It took me a few listens for me to realise that that was what it was saying. It's quite flowery with the language, and I will admit my poetry is a bit more blunt force trauma, so sometimes I don't pick up on nuance like that. But what's really good is it brings things down and you've got the driving force of it being a piano-based ballad and it has those nice pauses which make you go, ah! 
almost like you're you're about to reach climax, but it's not letting you yet. And then you've got it breaking into your typical some guitar solos, which really wrap around you and very much very much emphasize the feelings of that moment. And then it finally at the end brings the two brings the guitars and piano together and really drives home the message and it really expertly gives you this sense of you've always got to be thinking about the other person. Almost like the piano and the guitar are acting like that. Next we have Scars of a Generation. Now the liner notes for that are Never let hatred choke your souls in a fire, which is basically don't worry about the disregard and disdain and the mockery that you might receive from those who don't understand the genre that you love. Just embrace it and let the hatred wash over you. Don't let the hatred flow. It is one of the faster tracks on the album. I do kind of have this image in mind that um, there's fire extinguishers to hand just in case. But despite it being one of the faster tracks, it's still very skilled, very nuanced. The guitar work never falters and the drums are on point. It just it kind of needs to be one of the faster tracks. Next, Dead by Dawn. Now this, the other favourite of mine on the album, aside from Dominion, this feels like it belongs in a horror movie. And I mean that in a really good way. Like, this is the sort of song you expect from a proper, bloody, gore-drenched, horror movie, you know, the body count is high, the terror is palpable, the monsters tangible, none of this CGI awfulness that you've got these days, it's, you've got the killers there. I mean, I suppose you could have some CGI because the liner notes are never ask a Ouija board when you're going to die. So you'd have sort of ghosts going about, but um, I more imagine that there'd be possessions going on and I, I kind of imagine sort of Ghostbusters style proper tangible monsters. Um, maybe not as cheesy, but none the more for that um yeah maybe not used in the soundtrack proper but definitely for the credits you you can imagine the roll the rolling credits as this is playing and it's got this nice chanting you will be dead by dawn kind of thing going on and you've got this nice evil sinister breakdown vocal breakdown going on during the song it's really nice and crisp and the guitar work is very sort of forceful and it's that right, it's that sweet spot of not too fast, not too slow, it's just right. Next we've got Battleworn and Bloodline which are basically a preamble that's 39 seconds long that showcases Oscar Dronjak and Pontus Nerdgren's skills on the guitars and it's this nice guitar preamble kind of in the same vein as Battle Hymn leading into One Shot at Glory by Judas Priest and I, I kind of feel that because of the scope of Bloodline, it really needs that sort of build up because we're dealing with a song of different end of day steel, um, Ragnarok, which if you know your power metal, you know that Ragnarok is a common thread amongst those sorts of bands. But what's interesting is it does sort of, it's actually using imagery that's less often used. It's focusing on the whole myth of when Ragnarok happens, Asgard will fall, but it will be reborn and it's just it's really good at sort of you've got this grand scope of a great battle happening and 
sort of the drum beats are very much like the charging into battle and the guitars are the swinging of the swords and axes and hammers and just vicious fighting going on all leading into the fall of Asgard and its rebirth. Great song for if you want to soundtrack any sort of battle scene that is focused around Ragnarok. Filmmakers get on that. Next there's Chain of Command. Now this is your typical uh, following a great valiant leader into battle. It's got a nice flow, it's got very good guitar work going on, the drums are all solid, vocals very on point, but I don't like it. I don't know why, I can't put my finger on it, but for some reason that's the one song on this album and I... spoilers, but yeah, this is the only song on the album that I don't like, and I don't know why! I can't think of a logical reason why I don't like this song. And that upsets me even more, because every element of it I should like. But it just, it leaves me feeling cold. I, I, it's confusing to me. I, and I have to apologise, because there's, what the hell? I, I don't get what's gone on there. I, I suppose I, there's going to be one that doesn't tickle my fancy eventually. Go figure. However, we do end on a high note for me with And Yet I Smile, which that has a sentiment that really resonates strongly with me, and I feel it will with quite a few people. Because the liner notes say, in the end, we only regret the things we do not do. And that's definitely something that strikes a chord for me because I've always been of the philosophy that I would rather try and fail than never try at all and constantly be questioning what if. And it brings the tone down a bit, but it also helps sort of wend you on your way and gives a nice calming close and I feel there couldn't be a more perfect way to close the album because you've had several songs which are emphasizing this idea that they are following their hearts, their passions, their loves, their putting their loves as their priorities and they've tried and they've succeeded but they've only succeeded because they've tried and I feel like this is the perfect way to close that album. Overall I would give a four out of five. I really enjoyed the majority of this album and I won't lie the only reason that score's not higher is because of Chain of Command, and I hate the fact that I don't even know why. With that said, I would definitely encourage everyone to check this album out, and I won't doubt that you'll probably enjoy that song more than me, and, you'll, and if you don't, you might actually be able to explain what it is that I'm not I'm not able to enjoy, but out of 12 songs, you've got one that I don't like, and it's for reasons I can't even explain. It's not even a bad song. Go figure. But yeah, definitely check this out. It's on Spotify, it's on, yeah, like, you can get it from Napalm Records. I got it, I got it on the day. I. I pre-ordered it, I got the album through the mail on the day. I definitely don't regret that pre-order. Then again, Napalm Records, you can't really go wrong with most of their stuff. Just one last thing, I definitely, this artwork, like, um, so, who did, does it say who did the artwork? Um... 
Samwise Didier. Samwise did. Well, that explains a lot. In fact, yeah, it looks like a fucking Warcraft character. <laughs> yeah, this art. Like, if you just want to. I would even encourage you to buy the album, even if you're not into power metal, just for the artwork. You know, get it for the artwork and then give the album to someone who does like power metal. Like, this is the sort of thing that I. Uh, anyway, gonna have got to cut it there. That's it for this episode. Hammerfall, you definitely made Sweden rock.